You boys comfy back there? No. Why do we all have to be squeezed into the back of this car? Because you're my sweet little maniacs, and I want you safe. Mike, this is not what I had in mind when you offered to pick me up. Paul. Hey, hey, Paul. Paul. What? Why again are we driving? I'm, right, I'm literally right next to you. I, I okay. Stop well, breathing <laughs> on me. <laughs> We're all gonna get COVID. Oh, uh, Paul, Paul, wh- why are we driving you back to Illinois? I explained this. So I sold my car in Los Angeles, but I, I didn't think about the whole COVID situation, so I didn't have a way to get back home to normal. Ah, uh, fair enough. Oh. Mike. Like, someone just poked me. I don't know what they poked me with. It feels like a... oh, Like a ghost penis. Yeah, someone just poked me, too. It could have been a penis. Hey, stay on your part of the seat, ghost penis. You know what? I tell hey, you, Paul, I tell hey, you guys, what, I think Jay. it was you. Are I you the ghost say, penis? Guys, guys, guys. I just Chris want to say, chill out. Product. Product. I'm not making pull this car over. over. I will pull this car over. I'm tired of being Let me say one thing. All right, I'm pulling over. You're going to be so bad. Stop. I am looking at you. of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Holy crap, ow, wow, where, oh, whoa, where? Are oh, we? My neck. Is, is everyone okay? Oh, I think so. All right, we're doing a roll call here. Paul Brooks? Oh, yeah, uh, present, present, still alive. It was like a, some weird CGI wormhole or something. I don't know. Yeah, right? Uh, J- Jason Halls, you okay? You're gonna die. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. Oh, dear God. God damn it. That was gonna be my thing. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, is, Paul. Wait, is this the intro, or are you just checking to see if we're alive? Both? Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I I don't know what came over me just now. Oh God, I'm okay. Sounds. Uh, what about? I haven't heard anything. Crazy Chris Hudson, are you you okay, buddy? I heard him. I heard him cough. Uh, oh, oh, I guys, what happened? I feel like we've been through an entire season of B movie mania. Well, we have. We we oh. have, and now we're in some sort of oh my God. CGI world. Is this what happens when you watch this many bad movies? What did I don't remember what happened, Mike? Did did you crash the car? Well, I guess uh, last thing I remember is you guys were fighting, Ugh. and then I tried to pull over, and then these two little twins like ran out in the road, and I tried to miss them, and then we're here. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know what's going on, guys, but I'm glad everyone seems to be okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. The 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 car thing. We'll figure this out. What are we going to do? I guess we may as well record this episode that we were planning on doing. What movie did we watch again? Oh, we watched the 2003 film Despiser. 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 Oh, I thought this background looked familiar. Yeah, All right, this, I get it Come now. to think of I it, this it. looks a lot like the movie. Yeah. Does that mean, does that mean we're in purgatory? Oh my gosh, I think it does. Well, I like to call it the netherworld. Oh. But, yeah, I'm not Catholic. (laughs) It's kind of cold down here. It's a bit chilly, even with all the flames kind of floating around over there. A lot of flames, but a lot of blue, you know, like dark blue sky with with clouds. Well, anyway, for anyone else, are you guys all recording? Yeah, it's a good thing we all brought our stuff into the car with us. Hey, Mike, Mike. Yeah? Chris doesn't stop recording. That's fair. You have been recording since the previous episode. So, hey Mike. <laughs> yes, Paul. Uh when we got into the car accident, I accidentally turned my recorder on, so I am recording. Oh, good. Good. <sighs> well, okay. So, I guess if we're recording this episode, we may as well 
eventually release it. So let me cl- let me clue the the listeners in on to, to what the fuck we're talking about when we say despiser, despiser, despiser. A refresher course, on, and maybe we can glean some sort of knowledge from this this plot premises of. Of the film Despiser to get our way out of purgatory. Despiser. Having just been fired and dumped by his wife, life couldn't possibly be worse for independent artist Gordon Haig until he wrecks his car and finds himself in purgatory, that is. Once there, he's attacked by fantastic shadow men and legions of ragmen. <laughs> they just... <laughs> They're just throwing... The shadow men are fantastic. And I like I like how the synopsis like <laughs> expects us to know exactly what ragmen are. Yeah, that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, um, uh, Gordon is rescued by an eccentric band of freedom fighters, people from different times of history who have lost their lives to noble sacrifice. Uh, and then they fight a, 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 a being called the Despiser... Uh, in a Rating god time. abandoned happy. I mean, this thing just Rating goes on long. But I'm bum, 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 bum. I think we can just, you know, get into it. Yeah, I, shortest well, episode ever. Before we get into it, why don't we each do a quick? I, and I've heard this is good for survival. We each do a, a, a something called a quick take. Quick takes. Crazy Chris Hudson, you you were in army. What's your quick take? Uh, the CGI work, uh, I mean, the Amazing Bulk really wishes its CGI was as good as Despiser. Fair. That's great. Uh, how about you, Paul Brooks? The movie is called Despiser, but I liked it. <laughs> you didn't despise I didn't despise Despiser. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, how about you, uh, Jason Hulse? I don't know if I've ever seen a movie this low budget with this much CG directed so well. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm going to say hell yeah. Or hell yeah. Purgatory yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mike? For myself, I found uh, that I've been describing this film as if John Carpenter teamed up with Tim and Eric to make a Lifetime movie. <laughs> and yeah, that's, anyway, that's good. That's good. So this film uh, came out in 2003. I I feel like I've read somewhere it was filmed in t- 1998, but I could be very wrong. I haven't I seen it anywhere like else. Yeah. yeah, I saw yeah. that somewhere too. Or at least they were okay. had the ideas and were working on it. Yeah, that far long ago. So this is directed by Philip J. Cook, an independent film director. You can tell that Philip Cook really knew what he was doing when he planned out his shots. Yeah, I would really put this, like, with movies that have, like, a lot of, like, CG, like, sets and things, I would put this more in the 300 Sin City Sky Captain kind of look more than I would The Amazing Bulk. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. well, I mean... Somewhere in the middle. He had no money. Yeah, but I mean, the, the quality he, is a little above him at bulk, but... He did a lot with very little... <sighs> And you can tell, and like I said, you can just tell there's an understanding of how to put together the scene. But to speak to the world, it's like there's this purgatory ruled by this thing called the despiser that's also trapped in this purgatory. And if you die valiantly, you go there. Is that pretty much setting the? Well, I, I think if you if you die anyway, you, if you die valiantly, you go there and become a hero. If you just die, you go there and become a ragman. Is that true though? Like, do I don't you, know. like everybody I ends no up there idea. then, or there's really no? The, don't the ragmen choose to become ragmen? They're the ragmen they are do. like minions. It's it's a weird thing at the beginning where they they say, and I don't know the history. Maybe that's some research I should have done instead of just looking into the movie. <laughs> I should have done some fucking research into Catholicism or something. Because because at some point Nimbus Carl Nimbus who who will, I'm sure we'll get way into because I'm sure Favorite everyone character. yeah everyone loved Char- Carl Nimbus. He, he describes the situation as saying, like, that Gordon, well, well, we'll get into this, but Gordon must have died through self-sacrifice because he's a good guy. Otherwise, he would have been one of them, one of the ragmen, he says. So he doesn't say specifically that everyone goes there, but he says that there's, like, a reason he's a good guy for some, I don't know. It's, there's a, <clears throat> not everything connects in this in terms of, like, not all the logic pieces fall together as far as I can tell. Yeah, but it's like, it could. 
you could you could connect like they don't give you all of the information, but I no. feel like they give you enough to go yeah. that you'll buy it. I bet what the deal is is the the people who run over the highway twins become ragmen. <laughs> <laughs> At some God. point in life, we all have to decide, do we what? run over the twins or not? What if we just never actually describe what the highway twins are and just keep referencing them? Um, no, can't do it. Paul, Paul, what were, you, what were you trying to say? Well, I think that uh, this movie has a lot of rewatch value. I watched it three times uh, in preparation for recording this episode, and there are things that you pick up on each time that you watch it. So I think there are some things that are kind of hidden in there. Um, and if you if you go back and watch it again, you might pick up on some of the little details of, you know, the, the established mythology and all that. Mm -hmm. It is dense. Yeah, I feel it's got a lot of stuff uh, in the level of Land of College Prophets, where it's just, here's a bunch of history. And we're, you're going to find out some of it, and you might not find out some of it. It's just how right. it is. Yep. You're going to have to work hard to figure it all out. And I appreciate that. Yeah. We're not dummies. We'll, I like sitting in a world, man. Mm-hmm. Now, who wants to maybe give an idea of what it's like while we are, as a viewer, in the land of the living? <laughs> I'll do it. Paul, t please tell us what it's like to watch Gordon, our main character, interact in The Land of the Living. I mean, it's relatable because it's not a lot of fun for Gordon. He's, he's a guy who's working a job. He's a graphic designer. He's, try he's on a tight deadline. He's trying to get these graphics done for this presentation. But his boss comes in, presses <laughs> a button. Something happens on, on Gordon's computer. And this other guy deletes everything that Gordon has been working on for hours, maybe days. So it's a pretty frustrating situation for him. No, 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 wait. What? Oh, no. You erased it. Also, also, who hasn't wanted to call their boss a butt plug? Yeah. <laughs> not just a, not just a butt plug, a narrow-minded, uncreative butt plug. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I want my image right now. Right now? Well, you're going to get squat right now, you narrow-minded, uncreative butt plug. What? What did you say? Now, Paul, did you have, did you feel a, a, a oneness with Gordon in this scene as you yourself have worked in an almost identical office in Pontiac, Illinois, as a graphic designer? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know me well. Uh, no, I was fortunate enough to have a boss who was really cool with me and never was looking over my shoulder trying to delete everything that I was working on. <laughs> so, Paul, you never wanted to say, knock his tonsils out of his ass? <laughs> Uh, my boss, Bill, is a pretty big guy. That's, that's not a good idea. Well, yeah, but you could have taken a, ch like, drawn a picture of a chainsaw cutting through your boss, right? Oh, uh, graphic designer humor. <laughs> <laughs> Scribner, about this morning, I just wanted to pop. I just wanted to, um, just wanted to, um, just wanted to knock your tonsils out your ass. Chris, I don't know if you would know what happened with this. Like, he just hit a button. He didn't go, like, <laughs> file, close, do you want to save this? No. Yeah. He just, like, clicked on part of the screen. And then Gordon is like, it was it was saved in RAM, not on the hard disk or something like that. <laughs> well, well, Paul, in the 90s, computers were a lot different than they are now. Like yeah. right, right now, um, data is stored. Yes, there is RAM, but they're also stored on either magnetic media or some sort of like solid state media. In the 90s, they, uh, data was stored by old grandmothers crocheting things. <laughs> and so they'd make... Oh, They'd make little tapestries of, <laughs> of what you're drawing. And if you hit the wrong button, it just kind of spontaneously combusts. That's so it, the it was problem right there. Very volatile mm. storage in the 90s. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're fired, Gordon. Fired, capiche? No. I quit. No. No, you're fired. Son of a bitch. Post-production took a couple of years on this. I and it shows. Why. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it was done by two people, right? It was it was Corey yeah. Collins was a guy who did the the most just did the the rendering and all the special effects. I mean, all the 3D rendering stuff, right? Philip Cook did 85% of the CG in this. Oh, wow. Well, including that cute little alien kind of at the beginning. I think both of them worked on the, anytime you see like Despiser or any aliens, that's that's Corey, but um Philip, the director, did all of the like lighting effects and all the background shots and, and all that stuff. Incredible that he directed this thing. He served as the art director and he did 85% of the CG. Just unbelievable. And like what? 90, 95% of this movie is CG? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. You know, more so than Stephen Grew, you, you got to wonder what, or, what Philip Cook could do. With a ton of money and yeah. like a yeah. team of people behind him, because the dude clearly knows how to lay out scenes. Yeah, let's get Jack Black in as the despiser, <laughs> yeah. the do titular a despiser. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's almost a little bit of a um, Peter Jackson vibe of like, wow, what could oh, this yeah. guy do if yeah, he had yeah, some yeah. money? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is all purgatory we're talking about. Half of this film, well, more than half of this film, takes place in purgatory, where well, where we are now. Right. It's yeah. weird. I, you know, in fact, this bridge we're on right now, I recognize it from the movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The lava on either side. Yeah, yeah. We should maybe <laughs> think about getting into some sort of warehouse for the night to record the, this episode. You know, in case there's any weird stuff going on out here. That's a good point. Yeah. We should get into safety. Uh, <laughs> and while while we're doing that. Um, Chris, can you, can you speak on the, the tonal difference of how in purgatory, the world is this CGI stylized wonderland and what it looks, what the film style in, in the, the living world is? No. (laughs) (laughs) It's a very specific question. (laughs) Well, I mean, I'll, yeah, yeah. You've got these two other co-hosts that are heavily steeped in the making of film and know exactly how to answer that sort of question between the, the stylized real world and the stylized netherworld. And you go for the guy who just doesn't know shit. Hudson, All right, so J- I'm asking you. Sp- okay, you know what, Mike? I will answer your question. The main difference between the CGI world and the real world is that Gordon's wife loves him in the CGI world and <laughs> really does not like him in the real world. Okay, that's the biggest difference I noticed right there. I am so tired of working two jobs so you can fart around all day and not even finish your paintings. And then and then when someone does offer you a couple days of commercial work, you freak. I'll try harder. I'll sit around drinking beer, lamenting about how no one notices your art. Well... Gordon, how do you expect anyone to notice your work if you don't market yourself? He doesn't try to get his job back. Right. And so Maggie is upset, and they're already evicted when he gets home from that <laughs> yeah. whole fiasco also, with his boss. Also, can, can we go on to a bit of white privilege here? Because, okay, Maggie works two jobs, and, and Gordon's got his one. But come on, live, live within your means, people. It's true. Come on, you don't have... Just because... You you th- get a, a lease for a real fancy you know one bedroom apartment <laughs> does not mean you can afford to live there. Also, we should point out that Gordon. Part of the reason that Gordon is frustrated, and I can identify with this, Gordon is an artist at heart. He's a painter. <laughs> he's a great artist. He's actually he's very talented. And he was he's a veteran. He was in the navy. Where are we going to go? I'm going to my mother's. Everything else, storage. Oh, your mother's. Well, that's not so bad. I'm going to my mother's, not you. She hates you. Well, that's just great. Ever since I left the Navy, she thinks I'm a bum. No, she hated you before that, but at least then you were bringing in a steady paycheck. He was in the Navy. He, he <laughs> he's served a in the Navy. Artists. But he's also an artist, and he's stuck in this dead-end graphic d- design job. And With he's, a he's, butt plug you know, boss. He's got a butt plug boss, and he wants to just paint, man. <laughs> but that well, don't pay the bills. <laughs> and I, I found it particularly uh, hurtful when, see, okay, Gordon and Maggie are going two, di- two different ways at this point. Because Maggie says, okay, I'm going to my mom's. And he's like, great, well, she doesn't like me, but okay. And Maggie's like, no, no, no. I'm going to my mom's. Well, not like, just that, Jay, but I mean, she's got a U-Haul in the driveway and she's packing all her stuff. Yeah, with Gordon's friends. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she helping. was the one that before he quit fired from his job. Right. And, yeah. and so what I found hurtful when he's like, oh, okay, I'll check in with you tomorrow. She's like, nah, I'd prefer if you didn't. <laughs> Gordon really has some heroes journeying to do. Yes, he yeah. does. And they really set up the relationship that needs to be repaired by Act 3 in Act 1 very nicely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it really makes me wish that we'd seen the Highway Twins earlier on. God damn it, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> or even later on. So he he comes driving through. He almost hits the highway twins. Uh, he crashes, <laughs> ends up in in purgatory. I well, I know that you're trying to skip over the highway twins. I won't allow it. <laughs> Whose kids are they? They come back later. Don't worry. They're on the highway. Those, They're those not even along a residential kids. street or even a street in the city. They are straight playing along the side of a highway by themselves. <laughs> on a bridge, even, Jay. Not just the side of a highway. They're on a it's highway madness. bridge. This is a, this is a fucking 65 mile per hour speed limit. Trucks going by. There's construction. <laughs> and these two twins run right out in the front of Gordon's car. And they are 10 tops. At yeah. the yes. yeah. hops. How'd they even get out there? Mike? <laughs> yes, Paul. If I said the word DVD, you would know how to say it properly, right? Do you want me to say it right now? or I do want you to say it. So I'm going to say a word, and then I want you to say that, and then I'm going to say something after that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Despiser. DVD. Facts. <laughs> so there, there you go. You can edit that together. Oh, I see. <laughs> because I, I, you know, I listen to the audio commentary, so I have a little inside information here on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, those two kids on the road are, in fact, Philip Cook's real kids, what? even though Chris already said that. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. Well, that. well, you know, and I found out by Facebook stalking everyone involved with this film. Oh, <laughs> oh boy! Just to be a little, to maybe a little creepier than watching the DVD commentary, but hey, <laughs> you got the same knowledge either way. You do what you got to do. <laughs> anyway, so he misses the Highway Twins, Ash, aka the the Cook Kids, and yes. uh, <laughs> ends up and ends up where Jay? He ends up in purgatory for the first time, and it's. It's, you know, like we've described it a lot by now, it's it's a CG world, and I found it interesting that he is thrust right into the middle of a bunch of ragmen, which, if we haven't said, are people with rags over their heads, <laughs> and missiles. <laughs> There's missiles everywhere, mm-hmm. and... Not just missiles, Jay. Nuclear missiles. Right. Like, this is the, the, the chunk where you get uh, Gordon, he's confused by everything, he meets the, the crew of good guys... Um, so yeah, the, everything kind of comes together and gets rolling right here in, uh, Purgatory Land. Salvation is mine, saith the Lord. Follow me if you want to be free. But Nimbus and his crew are introduced to us by him shouting scripture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Salvation is mine, says the Lord. Follow me if you want to be free as, as a a, a sensible Ford sedan flies over trees, <laughs> lands down, power slides as they're sh- they're shooting the ragmen as it power slides, and they open the door and go oh. get in. I okay. One thing that I found hilarious throughout this whole movie is every time there's a vehicle, it's never just like a like a kick ass like muscle car or anything. It's always like. Uh, yeah. Like a Ford uh, Taurus. Taurus. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, Ford Taurus. You're, you're, like, not re- you're not restricted by real cars. You can have literally you, any car anything. you want. They could fly. And, and they just, it's like a blue Ford Taurus. And then, <laughs> okay, I would love to know how he got that. And then, like, there's a part where the Shadow Man is, which is one of the bad guys we meet here, like the second in command bad guy. He's giving all of his minions guns at one point, and he's pulling them out of the back of a station wagon. And it's yeah. like so great how there's all this crazy work that's gone into this movie and all this effort put into the CG. And I just love the fact that the cars are like four doors. Yeah, they're, they're very sensible choices. It is. Well, we got we we got to about uh, eastern the eastern part of Los Angeles before we crashed. But it's this yeah. sort of like weird upside down version of of some part of of the earth. I think they say that they're in Washington D.C. 
Mm, do they? Yes. Well, yeah, you, you can tell because uh, Maggie's mother's condo is, uh, you can see in the background of the establishing shot, the Washington Monument. Really? Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, totally. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> this ain't the Washington you used to know, Gordon. Two weeks ago, it wasn't Washington at all. Used to be Wyoming. I, I don't understand any of this. So none of it makes any sense. <laughs> that all reminded yeah. me a lot of, like, the Dark Tower kind of thing. Like, oh, yeah, where, yeah. Where, like, sort of time and space just shifts and doesn't quite make sense <clears throat> and everything's a little off. Purgatory's weird, man. Yeah, yeah. it's a weird place. It, it gives me a little American Gods with all the road travel because yeah. oh. Purgatory is just highways, apparently. Yeah. Bridges and roads. <laughs> It's just going 150 yeah. miles an hour the entire well, time. <laughs> well, I, thought, I, I thought I saw a reference to like an alternate title called something like the the road or some highway. Yes, something it, it like was that. originally called the road, and uh, I, I don't know who made the decision, but they just somebody felt that it wasn't a marketable enough title, so they changed it to Despiser. Probably when Viggo Mortensen left the production. That's when they had to change it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, when yeah. Cormac McCarthy put out yeah. the book. Yeah, this isn't originally a Cormac McCarthy inspired. <laughs> that was the original title, though. Yeah, okay, that's fair. That's good. But it, it is a weird world where it's roads and stuff like that, and it makes you think, like, heaven's supposed to be paved with streets of gold, right? Like, yeah, this is not heaven. No, this is asphalt, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> asphalt, asphalt and missiles just coming out of the ground, by the way. There are missiles strewn everywhere, but there is a scene in this film where the Shadow Man is is getting the ragmen to literally, like, like Egyptian slaves, pull <laughs> missiles out of the ground by pulling yeah. ropes over pulleys. How and did the missiles get to purgatory? I have no idea. I asked... <laughs> I asked my neighbor. My neighbor came up the other day to watch this with me, and, oh. and at some point I'm like, wait, why are there, like, Scud missiles in purgatory? <laughs> What's going on here? Who are you guys? My name's Nimbus. Call to my friends. And seeing as how you had a good enough sense to ride with us, you can call me Carl. Gordon escapes all of the ragmen and the shadow man, jumps into the car with uh, Carl Nimbus and the crew, who is who's there's uh there's Nimbus who's like uh what he's uh like an older he, he, everyone is from different periods of time here right, right. so he 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 like fought in World War One yeah. or something yeah, like Carl that. Nimbus yeah, yeah, is yeah. from like World War One mm -hmm. um the Japanese guy he's with Fumi he's from Fumi. World War Two Japanese uh, like airplane pilot I think and then Charlie Road Trap Charlie Road Trap what a name and then there's the cowboy yeah Don't Jake's the cowboy. a cowboy gangster isn't he like a mobster. No, I thought he was a cowboy. a cowboy. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. And they never let him drive because he's used to riding horses. This is Fumi Tamasawa. He's an aeroplane flyer. Over there in that car is Jake. Road trap. Hey, Mike, can we talk about Jar Jar Binks' head now? <laughs> I knew what? it looked familiar. Yes. <laughs> yes, we can, Jay. So, so there, there's a lot of CGI, as we said, throughout it. And there's a couple different, like, modeled monsters throughout the Despiser is one of them, and we'll get to him. But there is our first introduction to a CGI model character is uh, while Gordon and Jake the Cowboy, I learn, uh, are looking around <laughs> the, the warehouse they've holed up in for the night. And Jay, cute little tell, thing. tell me about this cute little thing. Oh, God. <laughs> it looks like Jar Jar Binks' head. It and does not. It does, too. And, and Jake is trying to convince Gordon to kill it. You know, I guess it's some sort of like, I don't know, like, hey, you're the new guy, kill it. And he's like, I don't want to kill this thing. And it ends up running off into the dark and they try to follow it because they don't want to sleep with, you know. Well, yeah, Carl says, time around. to earn your keep. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, they don't want that thing running around there. So it lures them back into the dark and a giant monster comes down out of the ceiling, which is pretty where do, cool. Where do you guys think those things came from? Were they on the spaceship with the Despiser? Have we talked about the Despiser spaceship yet? No, like, we haven't. Were they native to the Netherworld? Are they? They, they have talked about it by now in the film, though, and they talk they about the Tunguska blast. Yeah, yeah. There's so this is something like Paul. You said earlier this this movie's got a lot of rewatch value because you, there's so much you can miss and catch. And I personally miss the the whole fact that the Despiser is an alien. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Despiser 
uh, is an alien from another world who I guess like crashed on Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, along with a lot of other despisers. 80 years ago, three beings crashed here. In Russia. Tungusta. In Starship. As with all calamities of the indecisive, they ended up here. Here being purgatory. We call it the Netherworld. These were soulless beings. For them, there was no heaven or hell. No place for them to go. And the, the despiser that we see in the film eventually is the only one who survived the crash. But mm. since they all died on Earth... Apparently, God was like, well, I'm going to have to put you in purgatory because I don't know what else <laughs> well, to do with have, you. They don't have souls. Yeah. They don't so they have can't souls. Get, yeah. So they so, can't get into yeah, heaven or hell. Yeah. His plan is to simply blow a hole into in reality. Right. Yeah. And but the thing that I found funny about this is that according to the heroes, when they're talking, they, in a way, confirm that this plan will actually work. And Maggie does too later. Like, cause Maggie shows up as like a, some sort of purgatory spirit. And she also warns the crew like, yo, he's going to blow a hole in reality and make it through. Yeah. So this insane plan that the despiser is trying to put into place, seemingly if he had enough missiles would have actually worked. You pulled the bomb from the earth. Yesterday. Two more like it and we'll have enough. You know, you know what would be yep. great is if the plan actually did work and the despiser makes it through into our world, but he's only like six inches tall. <laughs> <laughs> his, uh, nether world for, his nether world form is like 15 feet, <laughs> but in the real world, he's a cute little guy. Oh, that'd be amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, so evidently the way to travel dimensions is with buttloads of nuclear missiles. Or... Highway twins. Yes. <laughs> More highway twins. You can you can kill yourself to get there, or you can die to get there, but you gotta blow your way out. <laughs> wow. Well, that sounds pretty sexy. <laughs> speaking of getting out of purgatory, the Shadow Man also finds them in this warehouse, and another Ford Taurus tries to run over Gordon, <laughs> but just at the last second, Gordon... Whoosh, whooshes into nothing. Yeah, what the hell is with this? This is one thing I did not understand. Oh, because well, he got brought back to life. That's another, I think, shaky logic thing because yeah, he Hold gets brought the back to fuck life. Fuck on, <laughs> that's a problem you have. <laughs> and this, all of the fucking logic of this goddamn most movie. Most of it's fine for me. Blow, we could uh, blow a hole into a <laughs> in, into a spiritual yes. realm with yes. nuclear missiles, but someone can't come back to life and be taken from one realm to another. No, no, no it's fine. <laughs> it's just that, like, the timing of it. Right. Like, it's awfully convenient. Thank you, Paul. Here's the problem. Gordon, who died hitting, like, a highway, the, the side of a highway, in order to avoid the Cook twins... <laughs> <laughs> comes back to life because one because his best friend Norm, a stand up Norm! comedian in real life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a stand up comedian in real life from the uh, Washington D.C. Virginia area, apparently finds him on the side of the road and like resuscitates him within minutes of his death. So the general idea there is that Gordon is is able to come back to life because he was revived very quickly and his body was still warm. It was just a nightmare. The whole thing was just a nightmare. Your heart stopped beating. You died. You're bleeding. Your brains could be leaking out of your ears. And, and, uh, and at first he thinks that the entire purgatory thing was just a dream. Well, to be fair, I think he probably thinks it was mostly a dream because of the awesome 90s Gregorian chants. Oh, we haven't even talked yes. about that yet. <laughs> oh, it makes me want to listen to Vast. I think we should put a clip in right here. <laughs> I called it Gregorian hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but God. Mike, that brings me t that brings me to my next uh, despiser. DVD. Facts. 
<laughs> the main actors in this film, who we just kind of went over, were only on set together for three or four days. Most of their shots were done individually. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, huh. crazy. That adds an extra layer of shit on that season of Arrested Development, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never would have guessed. Well, that's good to know, Paul, but mm -hmm. you, know what's, you know what's bad to know? What? When Gordon comes back, there's a shadow man right there on the fucking bridge. Shit. He's wearing a hazmat suit made of garbage bags. Yeah, dressed yep. in the set from Neil, one of Neil Breen's movies. Oh, I wanted to say it. He's from <laughs> Garbage Bag World. <laughs> I beat you to it. Maybe there's some crossover. Maybe Purga Maybe Garbage Bag World is one step above purgatory. Oh, it might be. <laughs> Fateful findings, baby. That's... B-Movie Mania Season 1, Episode 3. Go. Wow. <laughs> So the shadow, so the shadow man is like there are multiple. There were multiple shadow men, but there's one left. We find out, and the shadow men are like they used to be despisers. Were yeah, despisers? is that what they okay, were? That's what I thought. Yes. Okay. Because yeah, because he does say it's a shame you lost your form to the last shadow man. Right. Um, I didn't realize it was a despiser, but that makes a lot of sense. And the shadow man's just jumping bodies, right? Like yeah. he gets wounded too much, and he goes back to the to the despisers fortress in a big sea of lava and gets himself a new body by by shooting himself so his body dies and in this particular case he blows up his old body with a grenade so he goes out oh that's this one style. okay that's yeah. right very Battlestar Galactica quite frankly I think Ron Moore has some explaining to do I bet you that explaining is yeah I like the Spicer it's really good <laughs> I'm sure he's got the DVD <laughs> I know this nice young man lives two floors below. He's a programmer. He's a little doll. You have always hated him, haven't you? Gordon. He's insecurity incarnate, riddled with fear, an emotional car wreck. I know. Maggie is over at her mom's house, and she's eager for her to get into some sort of a, a dating pool situation where... At some point, they just find, they look over at a window, or Maggie does, and there's a man on the ledge of this apartment building just hanging out. Well, an apartment building with a full house on top of it. Well, that's yeah. true. <laughs> and, 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 might I add, the Washington Monument in the background. This is where, yeah, we, nice call, this is where we bump against Amazing Bulk territory, slightly. Just slightly. <laughs> <laughs> but he's out there, Maggie offers to help, and then, like in a classic movie cliche, which I've never understood, that per in order to help, they go out on the ledge with them. What's your name? Jeff. Hi, Jeff. I'm I'm Maggie. D do you mind if I come out and enjoy the view? Ah, uh, you know they want to identify with them, get onto their level. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bad level well, to be on. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> that level is going to be ground level in yes, about thirty is. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so she goes up there. Uh, it, it turns out he's a, he's the shadow man. Yeah. How does this work? Uh, it's. <laughs> I don't shadow, know. It just shadow it does work. It does work. That's what the <laughs> um but the but the shadow man does take Maggie down uh to ground floor Chris Hudson. That was a surprise. Do they take the elevator? Well, in a nat sense. nature's elevator. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what they call Newton's elevator. So Maggie doesn't die, though. She ends up in the hospital. Incredible. Uh, Thank God for that awning. Yeah, the, the awning. The jump man dies, though. Well, he dies. Maggie doesn't. She's in the hospital. And then we get a very good CGI despiser head pushing through the wall of the, ho of the hospital, <laughs> which is really cool. I agree. Which oh. we haven't really mentioned. The despiser is this big, long worm with a bunch of arms, kind of, I don't know what you call it. Well, like, we haven't really seen him. We've only seen him in sort of like a silhouette so far. In sort of a shadow, man. Shadow. But his voice is ASMR before ASMR. It sounds like this. <laughs> and, it, and it was done in post-production by director Philip Cook. He did the voice of the Spicer too? Yeah. Of course he did. <laughs> I was a traveler among the stars, but I crashed, got stranded in this dimension, condemned to keep company with pathetic human wretches. He's 
a large being, and the fact that he talks like this <laughs> and is so quiet. Hey, you know, and it's a the whisper. Spicer doesn't need to yell. That's how powerful he is. It's just very stereotypical <laughs> villain of like. <laughs> I'm going to tell you all of my plan now that I have you in my grasp. I want to hear the Whoa. despiser say something nice. <laughs> Jason, I think you're a really swell guy. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, despiser. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Listeners, B-Movie Maniac, f- fellow B-Movie Maniacs, it is tradition for the last episode of the season to drink quite a bit. So if this episode is a little bit messy, we do apologize. But these things happen. You should have said that an hour and a half ago, Paul. (laughs) Here's the thing. You know what? Okay, all right. Things are getting a little wild here, guys, or a little confusing. Why don't we take a step back? Why don't we just regroup ourselves and let's just take an ad break here with... uh, with with this Night Beast Industries, Night Beast Industries. Uh, product that we are happy to sponsor and support 100%, no matter what ethical or moral issues it may bring. <laughs> I'm going to get another drink. Let's face it, times is changing. Temperatures are rising. Ocean levels are rising. The amount that my son thinks I'm a big old jerk is rising. But there's at least one good thing happening. In more and more places, weeds is illegal. It used to be that if you were walking down the street with a pocket full of weeds and you ran into someone like your mom or some narc preacher, you'd get nervous. You wouldn't want them to find out that you had just stopped by your friend's place and snagged a pile from their savage garden. What do you got sticking out of your pocket there, the preacher might ask. I don't think Jesus or your mom would approve of that. Just like some freaking narc. I hear you can go to states like California or Illinois, and no one will give you guff for picking up weeds wherever you are. I mean, it's just weeds. Weeds ain't hurting no one. And that's why I made this ad with the help of Night Beast Farms. Thank you. I got weeds. Lots of weeds. My yard's full of them. And I ain't embarrassed no more. Even if that means my son won't invite his friends around. So please, go to bit.ly slash nightbeast, and I'll send you all the weeds you want for free. Just pay shipping. That's bit.ly slash nightbeast, and I'll go out to my yard, grab a handful, rip them out of the ground, shove them in an envelope, flick that envelope, close the seal, put a stamp on it, walk it out to the mailbox to drop it in, and send it directly to you. I don't care who knows, not my mom, not my son, not even that dumb narc preacher. Because weeds is legal, okay? Weeds is legal. Please, please come get my weeds. Paid for by the council for actual weeds. Should we just do general laughter now? <laughs> that was a good one. There you go. And Mike, that does bring me to my next despiser. DVD. Facts. Cool. Norm's apartment was actually the home of Philip's mother-in-law, Constance Hubbard. What? Who didn't live long enough to see the finished product, what? but the movie is dedicated to her. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's in the credits. Wow. Crazy. Thank you, Constance. Thank you, Constance. Mm-hmm. Holy crap. And thank you, Night Beast Industries. Also, thank you, Night Beast Industries, very, very much. <laughs> Thank you for a great season of sponsorship. Incredible season. Wouldn't have been able to do any of this bullshit without you. Yeah. We wouldn't be able to pay for all this tape that we're spending to record (laughs) this episode. So much eighth inch tape, it's not even funny. This might be the longest episode we've ever recorded. I love it. I love it. (laughs) I, I don't know why. Because so, despiser. So, despiser. <laughs> so so he goes to Norm's, like we said, at Constance's home, and mm-hmm. uh, gets guns. Norm doesn't want him to do it because Norm's being a sensible person, a good friend. And Gordon just punches him out <laughs> so he can leave with the guns and then try to half kill himself. I can't let you do that. I don't want to get physical, but I cannot let you do that. Then I will. 
Sorry, buddy. Norm is really the Sam Wise of this film. <laughs> so, yeah, so he goes and then he drives up the bridge and there's like a little treasure troll like we talked about. Uh, that's die, yelling at die, him. You're gonna die. <laughs> Jay does that so well. Wait a minute. Uh, Mike. What? Favorite part of the movie. I mean, the <laughs> troll has been kind of throughout a bit. When he goes to Norms, he steps on the troll. It's like there's a lot going on with this troll at this point. That's it. Stay close, buddy. You're gonna die. 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 <laughs> If you were alive in the 80s or, 80s or 90s, I've been drinking a little bit, you know that trolls were a thing. And all yeah. of you had them. All of us had them, for sure. What, what the, like, the long hair and stuff? Yeah, the trolls with the hair. Yeah, you know. Well, fucking Trolls World Tour just made $185 oh billion. Dollars, so people should what? know what fucking trolls are. Well, a part of that $185 billion is from the sweet, sweet Despiser money. Probably. Despiser laid the seed <laughs> for Trolls 3 World Tour. You're gonna die. 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 I don't know why, but it comes to life. And as Jay alluded to earlier, he said, You're gonna die. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. Sounds great. And Philip Cook decided to take. He thought this was so important to the movie (laughs) that he or one of the other guys animated a troll, (laughs) put it in multiple scenes. Spent minutes, minutes where where Gordon is yeah like he throws it out the window and he's aiming his gun at it to shoot him like the, I think he just really hates trolls. Fool! <laughs> you're dead! You're dead! You're dead! <laughs> you're dead! You're dead! You're dead! Who's possessing the trolls? Is that is this <laughs> another Shadow Man? No it's idea. either a Shadow Man. Or or Hasbro is just I don't oh I don't my God. know I it's, don't know it's all that sweet troll money possessing it I guess it's yeah. definitely got to be some sort of Philip Cook thing uh, of him sort of <laughs> w- working out his frustrations because he did do the voice for the trolls as well yes he did <laughs> yes he did <laughs> and, and Jay uh, what did it sound like again you're gonna die you're gonna die you're gonna die. <laughs> God. You know, that works really well with the muffled uh, <laughs> audio you're setting it's gonna up. Sound it's going to sound great in the final episode, though. So, so when he yeah. gets he gets there, and, and <sighs> <laughs> poor Mike, and Dude. and and the Shadow Man is like doing a comic relief. The Shadow Man's kind of like the 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 one of the villains in Manborg. I feel like he's kind of got like, a little bit of a comedic tone to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the comic relief kind of thing. Didn't care for it. Wow. Wow. Oh. First, first, first shot fired about the film. That's the only shot. <laughs> Whoa, I'm gonna fall. <laughs> this action scene is one of my favorites of the movie. I think it's. I think this action scene is directed really well. Mm-hmm. I thought it, it was well put together. Yeah. The crew and Nimbus are like fighting, and the Shadow Man and all of his goons, and stuff's blowing up, and. Across the street, you've got Gordon, you know, rigging grenades to this tower to blow it up so it'll fall across and they can crawl across. The whole thing is just staged, I thought, really well. I it, it, I thought this scene in particular stuck out. Absolutely. God. J- hey, are you guys cold down here in purgatory? Yeah, a bit. Yeah. Mm. I could use a fire. God. I, you know, I could really go... For a hot shower, does anyone see like a building nearby where where we could like pop into real quick and take a shower? Uh, does anyone see? I'm Mike. If you don't mind, I'm gonna go look around a little bit. Yeah, go yeah, go see if you can find a sh- uh, uh, find here, a hot shower in Purgatory. I would like that, Paul. Yeah, because I I have gotten close to the, some of these flames we're seeing around, and I'm not getting warm by them, which is discerning. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a it's a background painting, so that makes sense. I'll go look around and see if I can find something. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, so, all right. Well, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> all right. So while Paul's gone, guys, let's talk about the fact that this tower that Gordon blows up does fall across, and and his squad does get to escape on it in this tense scene, right? Like Jay, you're talking about. It's very well directed. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The scene where they're they're like individually having to go across and and climb across this 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 treacherous 
it's like just like a triangular kind of pipe kind of tower, and oh, uh, and the ragmen are kind of shooting at them, and one yeah, one shoots below. himself in the, the face. The shadow man's out there. It's yeah, it's it's pretty yeah. intense. They got to make good. it across. Well, the shadow man gets up there, and the shadow man's got to stop him. And the hey, last hey person guys. to go across. Oh god! Hey guys, Paul. yeah, Paul. I I did I did find a shower in a in a warehouse building. So I'm gonna just pop in real quick. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll, yeah, Have I'll be back showering. in like I'll be back in like five minutes. All right. Perfect. All right. Cool. All right. Do we know if that water's safe to shower in? Oh no clue. It's probably <laughs> fucking acid. But yeah. I bet, uh, well, if it's glowing, it could take out shadow men. Well, we'll see. Yeah, that's true. But while they're there, while the shadow man's coming across, our 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 good friend, uh, what's a street trap? What's the name? Charlie Road Trap. <laughs> Road Trap. Our friend Road Trap. Did you get shot? Yes, the Shadow Man Ugh. pretty much. The, the thing is, like all the the. I don't know if we've really said the bad guys and the good guys both want the same thing. They both want everybody wants out of purgatory, right? Yeah. And so the Shadow Man is like, look, I won't kill Charlie Road Trap if you give us Gordon and we can all get out of here. Nimbus, give us Gordon and this one can live. We all want the same thing, the same thing to escape this world. Give us Gordon, we can all get out of this hellhole! You belong here, you bastard! Well, they think that Gordon knows the way out because right. he's escaped once already. Everybody knows Gordon has gone yeah. back and forth, and Charlie Road Trap's like, eh eh. And <laughs> pretty much sacrifices herself, takes out another body of the Shadow Man, and now we're left with Fumi, Jake the Cowboy, Nimbus, and. Gordon. But as you said, Jay, she sacrifices herself again. In purgatory. In purgatory. So there's like self sacrificception or something going on. Yeah. Nimbus talks about like finding your place in the universe and everybody's there. Is some philosophy involved. So, I mean, it's reasonable to assume that that she probably went on to a good place. Well, we see her. We see her at the yeah. end. <laughs> we see her at the end, surprisingly, for some reason. So she's fine. So forget what I just said. <laughs> well, I, I was wondering. She's just that. at another level of purgatory yeah, yeah. that's a little purgatory, less gray. Purgatory. She's like <laughs> she's like ninety percent opaque, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just driving through like some like forests. Yeah, yeah. I didn't true. remember seeing her at the end, and was very confused. Like, oh, did she self self sacrifice within the world where she self sacrificed to get into this whole wild thing? <laughs> so the squad has has escaped and they get, decide to do the classic thing of where like they're going to get new wheels, get a bunch of ammo, new Ooh. guns prepped up and they're going to they're getting ready to take on the despiser. Can't always wait for good weather to fish. And what's that supposed to mean? Let's kick us. Ooh, that really hit the spot. Oh my god, you guys got to check out this shower over here. Paul, you're glowing, so I don't know if that water was <laughs> safe. Yeah, that's <laughs> Well, I yeah, I don't really know what was it, but it's like a a, a upholstery business uh, next to a warehouse that had a shower in it for some reason. So, oh, I, I wait. you should check it out. Which one? That one over there? Yeah, right over here uh, where the movie was shot. Shit. Okay. Well, hey, I'm going to I'm also I think I'm just going to do it. I'm going to take that shower, too. Oh, uh, okay. So, okay. So, Paul, if you could, while I'm gone, please talk about Captain Jack for us, because I feel like you would know about Captain Jack quite sure, a bit. Sure, sure, yes, sure. Yes, Doctor Who! Finally, okay. we, get to, we get to talk about Doctor Who in the show at uh, last. The idea at is, fucking last. The idea is also to keep Chris Hudson from saying uh, too much about Doctor Who while I'm gone because I'll have to edit a lot of that out. No, not gonna but happen. I'll try if to make this quick. If we're talking about Captain Jack, we're talking about no, Doctor so Who. No, so the thing, the thing about Despiser is that there is nothing Doctor Who related in this film. You know, maybe at some point there was a character in Doctor Who named Captain Jack. None of us really know, but there is a Captain Jack in uh despiser and it's a whole sort of backstory almost a prequel sort of thing personally i would like a prequel a captain jack despiser prequel oh so this is a sort of pirates of the caribbean prequel yeah yeah kind of huh oh but that uh, makes a little more sense than doctor who okay so chris 
Captain Jack go? So, Captain Jack was the original leader of the Resistance, leading um, Mr. Nimbus, whatever his, Carl Nimbus. Carl. Carl. And I believe the cowboy and maybe, I don't know, he was the original leader of their little gang of Despiser Freedom Fighters. Right. Upon an assault uh, on the Despiser's uh, castle. Um, I believe, though, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I think he died and found himself transported to the 51st century where he became a time agent. No. Uh, no. And somehow he <laughs> no, stole, you're done. You're somehow done. Somehow he stole a spaceship, That's went back it. in time you're to done. World no, 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 War II no, 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 no. where he met I Rose trusted Tyler, you with this, who and Mike introduced has him come to the back to absolute chaos. And eventually became... It was Captain Jack who found the bullets. What bullets? Only ones that can kill a shadow, man. Made of some strange sort of metal from inside there. It's Captain Jack who found him. Yes, he made the special bullets, and they've got two left. They've got a bullet and a, and a pistol, and they've got, like, a grenade-sized one that they're supposed to kill the Despiser with. And these bullets look absolutely sweet. Lens flare out the ass. J.J. Abrams, eat your heart out. Well, I believe J.J. Abrams actually did produce this, right? Yes, and he played Captain Jack. It was not Philip Cook. <laughs> yeah, he, he worked on Night Beast and Despiser. <laughs> Jeffrey Abrams, as he was known back then. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, uh, Paul, for pointing that shower out. It was v- very refreshing. Oh, yeah, I love it. Got to warm up, you know? Yeah. Well, you have strange boils all over your back, but, I mean, it's Oh, fair. shit. Oh. I literally have oh. no idea what's happening right now. So I'm gonna call, I'm gonna talk about Doctor Who as a defense no. mechanism. Chris, you should go no. take the shower. Go take the shower, buddy. Uh, Come on, uh, take a shower. Uh, Are we? Wait, is this the beginning of the episode again? <laughs> um, I guess I'm gonna take a. Should I? Take yeah, a take shower? a shower. <laughs> take a shower. Take a shower. All right, I'll go take a shower. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll be uh, uh, right back, I guess. I don't know, those boils don't look very nice, though. It's like a massage, almost. Yeah, it's like <laughs> cupping. It's like cupping. Yeah, cupping. The, the swimmers in the U.S. Olympic team like it. Uh, all right, well, if the swimmers like it, I guess, what have I got to lose? I mean, your swimmers will probably be dead, but that's <laughs> fine. couple purgatory boils never hurt anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so then, did you guys get to the lava bridge and like going to the Spicer's? No, we're at the uh, lava bridge now. Oh my god, that lava bridge is long. I mean, if you're a Despiser, you want to live in the middle of a giant lake of lava. You need a way out. <laughs> it does make sense. It's really the 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 most memorable part of the uh, movie for me because um, this is kind of what I remember seeing from the trailer. You know, this is like the fucking action. Fucking action-packed, like, CG out the ass mm-hmm. portion of Despiser. Just incredible, incredible stuff right here. Well, that's, I think that's something we haven't mentioned yet, is that there's a lot of, like, car chase action in this film. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. not in a Fast and Furious, we're doing Tokyo Drifts around and doing that kind of stuff. It's mostly just the camera work in the CG world is so fucking well done. Absolutely, and I think that one of the things I love about, I mean, you guys know me, I love independent stuff where people are putting their heart and soul into something, and one of the thing that one of the things that's great about the BTS package of this movie, which again, we'll put a, 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 on bmoviemania.com. Is that, is that built to spill, Paul? It's behind the scenes, Mike. Oh, uh, I get that confused a lot. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These things have... You know what? Well, it's your episode. Go ahead and put your favorite Built to Spill music video down <laughs> we, below. We... Oh, okay. I was saying we don't have the rights, but all right. I'll post a Built to Spill music video down below. <laughs> down, yeah, down below on bmoviemania.com. But the BTS, I love that uh, <laughs> Philip Cook was like... Even, even Philip Cook, the... <laughs> director himself was like I th- the things that I could do in After Effects just blew my mind like even even the makers of the film were were blown away by by what they could do with the with the programs that that they were using so there's something really just cool about that you know 
I, I agree. It's that thing of like I, I in the behind the scenes uh, thing. They you know they talked about how he was learning it. Right? He wasn't. It's not like he was super proficient in the in the program. He was learning right how to use it. And I know that feeling. Who's peeing? It's probably Chris's shower, dude. <laughs> well, I guess we asked for that. I guess we did. That sounds like peeing, though. Well, maybe the shower... <laughs> it's not got a lot of pressure, apparently. <laughs> but there's just something about... Edit that out, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that feeling... I think we peeing. all know this. When you, when you don't know how to do something and you decide you're going to, like, try to make an effect in Photoshop or Premiere or, or After Effects or whatever you're going to do, and you, you're, you're trying to do it, and you're looking at little tutorials here and there, and right. you do it, and it looks fucking great, how good that feels to yourself. Exactly. <clears throat> I'm sure this movie was one long feeling like that for him. Yeah. it's I, I imagine. That's fucking but here's, great. But, but here's the thing. Jay... You know, like get take a shower, man. Get into this. Oh, why don't you Why don't you hop in the shower? Oh, I'm, I'm good for now. I mean, I, maybe we could a little bit, maybe. Do you want to take your shirt off? I mean, I'm, I'm not cold or anything. I mean, do you feel well? It was cold, but now after you, after you take the shower, the interesting thing about purgatory is that for whatever reason, after you take the shower. You're warmed up, man. It's like you're yeah. going through menopause. I think these, do you want to take the shirt off? I think these hey, boils are really hey, warming things up. Jay, I just got to say, I just took I just took a shower, and I'm like Gregorian chanting, like in my head, like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> needs more hip hop. Yeah. I can't Jay, take a shower. It's pretty good. I feel I feel I feel a lot better. Oh, that's good to hear, buddy. Glad you took yeah. the shower. Yeah, a lot better. A lot better. Yeah, but Chris, your your beard is like all it's like moving by itself now. Oh, that's not good. Well, it's just that's purgatory, baby. Yeah, baby. Live that purge life. Oh. <laughs> 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 So the Shadow Man is chasing them across the lava bridge, right? Trying to intercept them. Uh oh. We got hostiles on the tail. What? Hell, hell, these boys can shoot. And speaking of the cinematography in After Effects that gives it such weight and thing. The, the, the weight and thing. Weight and thing. <laughs> that is a technical. I don't know if you guys know about how movies are made, but that's a technical term. Um, no, I, I learned. I learned that from Hitchcock back in the day. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. Joseph Cotton always used to say that. Uh, and and so the Shadow Man has like a giant like uh, anti aircraft or whatever it is, some art artillery gun uh, on the front of his car. Is, oh, please, it, army. Oh, yeah, army. God. It's a it's a it's an automatic grenade launcher. Okay, so he shoots it, and then the here's the beauty of it: the 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 you follow this the grenade, this this projectile, you know, yes. grenade, with the camera behind it, but it doesn't just follow it like amazing bulk style, where it's just like I'm just behind it, fixed camera kind of thing. It like right. moves, and it's like f frenetic, and like it's just. Haptic and it's wild. It's just wild. It it's looks fucking really great. good. Yeah, it's it's like three D space of the bullet coming out of the gun and going up into the air, and you're following the bullet in the air and back and the down camera's and having a hard time following it, kind of a thing. Jay, it's almost as good an effect as that shower is. Mm. What? Also, I'm very drunk. Yeah, no, I think there's <laughs> and those boils are starting to get to you. I think they're getting to me a little bit. Golden Road is starting to get, get to me, and cheer, Golden Road, great brewery Golden here in uh, Glendale, California. Take me uh, home. You know, I just—I mean, you—you you guys were in the process of belong. trying to drive me home, Golden and Road. it's very bittersweet leaving you know Los Angeles. So just a quick shout out to Golden I'm, Road. I'm gonna do it. Jay is home. going to quit the podcast. So Jay's taking a shower Road. there. Perfect. So while Jay goes, takes that shower. 
Let's talk about the fact that, that missile I talked about that you see the, oh, the, the, the cinematography with crashes out in front of the cars and breaks the bridge. That which they have missile. to like stop just beforehand. Sorry, not a missile, the grenade. I, Let's not get you know. into RPG stuff on this episode. Hey, I'll let I'll let the bazooka stuff slide. Uh, well, there's no bazookas in this movie. That's right, there's not. But Number Mike, it's one of my favorite scenes. Oh, it's great, Paul. Why don't you why don't you describe it, please? They're trying to stop our heroes here from from accomplishing their mission. <laughs> and um, Carl, Carl, and <laughs> essentially for the time being, they do by blowing up this bridge in the middle of all this lava. Carl's it is in a bad way. It's not good. Gordon, you know, pulls him out of the car, has has those last kind of words with him about stuff as Carl's just kind of gasping for life. Carl's done. And and at the at the saddest moment, the the grenade launcher, it, it goes and this is this was their only chance to kill the despiser. Despiser. Their only chance. It just you see it like comically does it off into the lava then explode in the lava. Carl sees it happen. Carl! Carl, yeah. as he lays dying, yeah. sees the last hope fade away into a pit of fucking purgatory lava uh. and then dies. We never could get back. Could we? No. Not back. Not home. You can only go forward. They have, they do have, one regular bullet left. That is the glowy pink special bullet. And uh, Fumi, is it Fumi that shoots the shadow? No, it's Gordon. Gordon's or Gordon got has the, it? Got Gordon has bullet. it, yeah. okay. He takes it from uh, from Carl. So we're done with Shadow Man, <laughs> which is great. Well, he's the last Shadow Man if you ignore the existence of the Highway Twins. Interesting take. Jay, how's the shower? I mean, this towel has grown into my skin, but I feel refreshed. Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hey, we're coming up to my favorite line. Well, I hope it is while... Well, let's just say it. They, they drive up to the Despiser's base, which is Neil Breen's wet dream. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's all just tubes and trash bags. A lot of, lot of <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of plastic tubes. Tons. It looks really good, though. I mean, for having no money, dude, yeah. that looks good. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it actually does. Yeah, it doesn't matter that it was obviously just like drainage tubes for your house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. hey, they pull that shit on Star Trek sometimes. And, and and Hudson, your favorite line, say it when it comes up here. But they they get there. There's not much going on. They sneak in. They but they eventually get to the main chamber where the despiser is. Ragman, Ragman. Oh, is that your Stop favorite him, line? Ragman. That's my favorite. <laughs> Stop him, Ragman. Stop him, Ragman. Stop him. Initiating detonation sequence. Stop him, Ragman. Stop him. Stop him, Ragman. Stop him, Ragman. Ragman. All right, hold Stop on. Stop him, Ragman. No, this is okay. Stop him, Ragman. Okay. Oh, yes. Stop him, Ragman. Stop him, Ragman. Stop him, Ragman. Ragman. Stop him, Ragman. Stop him, Ragman. I can just go on forever. It's so great. Oh, shit. I can go on almost as long as the movie goes on. We'll get ready to do that again because we're, we're editing that part out real quick. Um, Just edit it back in where it belongs. That'll be the next 10 hour video. I'm, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. 10 hours of stuff in Regman. Awesome. Hey, Mike. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> this brings me to another despiser DVD. Fact. Uh, Great. Stop him, Ragman. No, I got it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> All of the Ragmen were portrayed by six actors. What? Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. All of them. That explains why there's only six IMDb credits for the Ragmen. I think it was you, Paul, that, that brought up this, the Peter Jackson 
likeness earlier in this. Right. 100%, man. Because how many orcs were there? Like 12 or something? No, there weren't. There were a lot of orcs. I don't know what it is. But the point is... <laughs> well, hey, James Cameron said, I can make aliens with six alien suits. And right. Phil Cook was like, if you can do it, I can do it. I'll do you one yeah. better. To give our listeners a sense of the scale on this, six rag- ragmen actors, like a hundred ragmen on screen at any one time. Oh, yeah. It's a lot. Hey, Mike. Yeah, Paul. You know, we've been doing this for a while. Is anybody getting hungry? No. Are you? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, all right. Do you see somewhere with this food? Is there a pizza I'm shop just, around or anything? I'm just gonna crack open this can of beans. <laughs> oh, is that? Did you get that from the ammo box out of Gordon's trunk? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Paul knows how to use a can opener. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing a very bad job. We should take a screenshot of that. One of my favorite throwaway jokes in this whole thing is they go to get more ammo at some point and they have to go to like the trunk of the car Gordon's driving oh, yeah. and they dump a box and there's like one or two things of ammo but in it is like cans of Hormel chili. <laughs> just, <laughs> I didn't notice they that. Eat, just, they eat a lot of beans see, and chili see, in my, this movie. My, yeah. one, of my, one of my favorite gags is when uh, earlier on when they're sitting around a campfire yeah. and Fumi's like, hmm, smell evil. And the cowboy is like, that ain't evil. Them's beans. <laughs> Somebody farted. There is some humor in this. I legit opened a can of garbanzo beans. Garbanzo? <laughs> that's even, that's not a bean you can just eat with that's a not, spoon. That's not, no. I know, but, it, but I'm moving. Well, I moved and this can of beans expired in June. So what do I do? You eat them, Paul, because it's a canned... Eat They're canned beans, and they're fine. You just took a radioactive shower, Paul. Beans aren't going to hurt you now. Power through it, Paul. Mm. Smell evil. That ain't evil. That's beans. Shut up, Jake. So Gordon and... (laughs) Gordon and Fumi end up in the main chamber, right? Of Despiser's Palace. Yes. It's so, guys, it's so good. Despiser taunts Gordon, and then Despiser, out of the water, just pulls up this big egg, cracks it, and Maggie's inside. <laughs> I, I loved that effect, by the way. <laughs> she's also clearly dry when she's in the water. Are we just going to gloss over when yes. the Despiser... Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Here's the right cowboy in twain. Yep, we glossed right over it. Oh, okay. Bullshit. Yep. Big ol' egg. It's a big glowing egg, and he throws it, and she doesn't die when it cracks open. Nope. No, it just, it just she... floats in the water. In the yes. CGI water, might I add. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not real water. Well, Jake establishes earlier on when he puts his hand in the water that the properties of purgatory water are not the same of, uh, you know, earth water. I did appreciate that. Philip Cook thought of everything. He did. He did. Wait, what are the properties of netherworld water? You just took a shower in it. If you put a woman in a metal cage surrounded by glass and then you break the glass, the metal can float so that you can can tease your, your nemesis... With yeah. his <laughs> Earth wife, this is this is pretty big, obviously, because they're face to face. And Despiser says he wants out of this purgatory to like rain hell on Earth. I want out. There is no way out. Don't you get it? You're dead. Everybody here is dead. There's no going back. This is purgatory! And Despiser doesn't believe any of that. Yeah. He thinks he can so, get out. So Gordon throws this grenade out a small hole out of the out of the uh, Neil Breen wet dream. Ragman. And it, yes. it, it, Stop it, 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 it careens Stop down him, the side, it bounce, 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 Ragman. lands next to a giant. Stop him, Ragman. What did you do? Stop him, Ragman. Next to a way. Stop field. him, Ragman. Yeah, and it's, dude, Ragman. it's a sweet shot because it, he doesn't Ragman. just chuck it out this hole. Like, Stop it's another one of those chuck shots. Chuck it out his hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these shots where the grenade, you follow the grenade out of the hole. It's a great shot. Yeah. It's, it's sweet. Good. It's a great it's shot. Good. 
and then it blows up like one missile, and which like sideways slides towards it. Like it's a pretty fucking good explosion scene too. Y- years worth of warhead collections. Can you imagine how big that explosion would be? I like that we're really trying to justify this. <laughs> well, no, it's cool though. Like I mean, it, that explosion cool. would be like unlike anything the world has ever seen. And so there's a big thing, and then suddenly Gordon comes to life in reality again. <laughs> because someone saved the, him. Okay. Also, the next, the next fucking day. Yeah, hold, hold the goddamn phone. Paul's got something to say here. <laughs> the second time that Gordon comes back, rem, rem, remember, if you will, listen, dear listener, that he... <laughs> Through the direction of the fucking troll, followed the flare onto the bridge <laughs> oh. to, to to drive his car, very psychomania style, Mike, off of the bridge. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and kill himself, which worked. It got him back to purgatory. But here's the thing, Chris. Um, oh, I know what you're going to say. Well, uh, he did that in the evening. Clearly, it was nighttime. And in order for you to come back into real life, yes, you have to have been, you know, not dead for very long. But he comes back like 12 hours later in the <laughs> oh, middle yeah. of the day. I'll and do you one better, Paul. I'll do you one he, better. And he's being revived by a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do you one better, Paul. When Gordon drives off that cliff... He's being chased by the police. Oh, that's right. right. Trained in CPR. Two, right. I'm pretty sure if they see a dude drive off a fucking bridge, they're going to call the, the hospital and send yeah. some fucking EMTs out. Okay. Well, you're not going to be rescued in like you're you're not going to be rescued in the span of 20 minutes for your body to keep working. Exactly. And much <laughs> less you're, if, and if you're going to if you're going to be rescued, you're not going to be rescued by some fucking homeless veteran. You're going to be rescued by the EMTs <laughs> who are coming to save your ass out of the fucking river. <laughs> Son, you is lucky. Thought for sure you was dead. You saved my life. Well, yeah, I suppose I did. Rating time. No, <laughs> Maggie's still Maggie's still alive. How's that work? He has to race to the hospital and and see her. And let's okay, look. The he, when he gets there, the doctors are working on her, trying to save her. And there's more Gregorian chants. Yeah, <laughs> everything's cool. Gordon made a painting. Uh, it's in the thing. It's of the. The time back in the pol- uh, it's purgatory pals. Yeah, it's fine. And then, and then also, it cuts through. It cuts back to purgatory, or we think purgatory. We don't know. Maybe Paul knows something from the DVD commentary. But we cut back, and everyone's driving in another Ford fucking sedan, uh, <laughs> and they're alive. Charlie uh, Road Trap is alive again. I think they're in heaven. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with heaven because they died in purgatory. They gotta be somewhere else together. Yeah, no, he said basically like the original the original idea in the script you Mike, you can feel free to put in the sound bite if you want to before. No wait, this. Paul if, Paul, are you saying this is a despiser? DVD <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yes, wow, I like how you flipped that. Nice. Uh, yes. <laughs> the original plan was to end the movie, which I quite frankly think would have been completely fine. To end the movie on the paint, the painting of them in the in the art gallery. That was the original last shot of the film, uh, and they just didn't feel that it had quite enough punch. So they so they went ahead and did the shot of everyone maybe driving into heaven. We're not a hundred percent sure. I like that. I like that more. Oh, okay. Not enough punch or not enough CGI. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of CGI. It's probably enough CGI. <laughs> Rating time! Rating time! Well, thanks guys for watching this movie with me. I uh, <laughs> yeah. am floored that we finally got to watch it. Uh, as I, th- I mentioned, I think, at the end of the last episode when I announced it, that it's something I've been wanting to do for years, but it became it got off of streaming for a while, and now it's back on. It seems like it was a force. Hopefully it stays there for everyone to watch. Because I'm going to say it right now, everyone should fucking watch this movie. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, 
But let's get into ratings. Let's do this. I, unless someone's got something better, I, I just think it's Ragmen. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's good. Crazy Chris Hudson, one out of 100 Ragmen. Well, I'm most forthcoming about Doctor Who, but since you won't allow me to go on about Captain Jack anymore, I will talk about what I think about Despiser. 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 I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet, though, so everyone else can get a chance to talk. Um, as we've covered, there are some flaws in the story. There are some plot holes, but overall, it's really great to see something. Low budget like this with some very kind of low tech CGI made by a fucking competent director who knows what he's doing. I mean, this movie looks fucking, I mean, it, it's, it looks low budget, but it's fucking great. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I mean, it's awesome. And I was trying to keep this close to the chest the entire movie, but I'm gonna give this 82 Ragmen. Nice. I enjoyed nice. this one. This is a, this was mm -hmm. a good one. Mm -hmm. I really liked this one. I think everyone should watch it. Hell yeah. Paul Brooks. Michael. Please tell me this is the one. The benchmark. <laughs> tell me this is the one. <laughs> the benchmark has, for me, for me, has always been Faithful Findings, which oddly enough you mentioned earlier in the show. Well, it's because the character's dressed up like one of the sets. <laughs> because the character is dressed up like one of the sets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got the garbage bag set. Oh, the garbage bag world. Yeah. The, <laughs> There's the garbage bag man. <laughs> the point is, Sorry. For, for, from literally episode three of the, of the show, mm -hmm. uh, Fateful Findings, which for me got 92, 92 points, whatever the rating system was back then, um, I have decided that I rated that movie too low. You know what I mean? Uh, it was too early yeah, on fair. in the show. Yeah. But the point the point of the, this whole situation is I'm ready to move past that. So for oh. Despiser, oh, wow. I hope you don't mind that I break from ranks here a little bit. I'm going to go 95 narrow-minded, wow. uncreative butt plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely incredible movie. Just from a, just, wow. I mean, just from a filmmaking perspective, you know, just from the sheer yeah. amount of effort that went into this thing. Absolutely astonishing. I can't really argue with that. No, you can't. Uh, anyway, so, all right. Thank you, Paul. I respect that. Sure. Jason Hulse. You know, I would love to see more in the Despiser verse. I hope someday maybe we get that. Fuck yeah. I, I said several times, you know, this thing is, it's so well directed. Like, you just can see it, if you know to look for it, that this is not just, yes, the CG has a low budget look, but you can tell that there is incredible intention behind every shot and how it's laid out. Um, and that just jumped out at me huge. Like I said, I've never seen a movie where it had such a low budget with, uh, doing so much. Like I, I find myself oftentimes in this podcast saying, well, you know, it didn't go far enough. You know, the movie didn't go far enough. It didn't swing for the fence. I don't know what else you could ask for out of this movie. Absolutely. It, it really is interesting. And I, I can't believe more people don't know about it. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I do think everybody that likes B-movies and, and even just like studying people who, I guess like us, who study these things really should see this. So, um, gosh, I'm going to go, I'll give it 92 Ragmen. Nice. Wow. All right. What about you, Mike? Well, <clears throat> am I the low one? What? Yeah, you're the low one, dude. <laughs> I'm the low one. Uh, no, 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 but yeah, yeah, I, I got nothing to repeat. You guys, yeah, it's fucking great. We've talked about it for fucking ever. Literally, I don't know how long this episode will get edited down to, but literally right now, I'm at two and a half hours. Oh so, my God. Oh my God. So, so <laughs> we've talked about edit. it a lot. And that is, for the listener, about an hour longer than we've ever really talked about a movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, wait. 
Wait, wait, this... what's that? Wait, do you guys wait? What, do you guys hear that? All the way in purgatory. I hear oh, it. Oh no! What? Will the music lead us out of purgatory? I I hope so. Could it be the answer? I know I know that we just left Los Angeles, but I hear some sort of strange, almost Mexican sounding music in the background. Oh my goodness, guys! I think Despiser deserves this. One hundred ragmen, motherfuckers! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Guys, thank you for making me feel like I, it was okay to do this for this one. I know sometimes there's some Absolutely. kickback. Absolutely, the, the scabs on your back help. Yeah, <laughs> like your, your boils are gonna scab over. We're gonna ride off into the light to mariachi music. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! Thank you, one and all, for listening to B Movie Mania for season four. We really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't been interacting with us, uh, please do. We have a Facebook page, B Movie Mania. We have a store if you want to support us, store.bmoviemania.com. You can get that. And it's we got a lot of cool stuff on there. A lot of green slime shit. It's whatever it is, it is. It's fine. Oh, okay. Not so fast. Holy shit, what is that? Oh no. It's the Despiser. We gotta fight it. Or else we'll never get back home. Come get it, boys. Stop them, Ragman. B. B movie attack! Stop them. Stop them. Take that. Take that. Stop them. Stop them. What's all this noise? We'll have no trouble here. Be gone, despiser! No. Thanks, Prince of Magic. Magic. How did you boys get down here? We were driving Paul back from L.A. Jay was poking me with his dick. <laughs> was not. Enough! You've all been banished to the off-season. But we always do an off-season. And you'll do it again. This time because I said so. Fine. I like the off-season. Quiet! Now be gone! Will this be the last we hear of the B-Movie Maniacs? Will they survive this wild and crazy off-season? Can anyone even hear me? You too, Chuck Daffodil! I see you over there, you fuck! Aw, oh, man... Ah, portal! Please don't cancel me!